mindful that we're always in the presence of God. We begin as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to offer to Almighty God, our morning sac our afternoon sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for it's full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people saying, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you. From among your own kin to him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb. On the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see the great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said. I will raise up 
for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. <laughs> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord.
proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, we live in an age of sound bites. They can give us the world in 22 minutes, except one particular problem, the matter of words. Words derive their meaning more often than not from the context in which those words are placed, gives it its particular meaning. The moment is removed from its context for brevity, for the sake of a soundbite, then rather than becoming a servant of the word, you become its master. And you can take that word and you can manipulate it and give it whatever meaning you desire. Whatever your ulterior motives may be, good or evil, the word becomes their servant, you become its master, and you can give it whatever meaning you desire. And as a consequence, today in the world of brevity, in the world of sound bites, rather than giving us truth and meaning, we get people having particular agendas. But in God's house, his words are not to be removed from context. The most profitable way in which you and I profit from the word of God is always in the context, the context of the mass, the context of the celebration of a sacrament. The word derive its meaning, derive its efficacy. It must never be removed from its context. On this matter of context, today's readings. The context. Moses is notified by God that his days of service is at an end. He will now rest from his labors and therefore he must go and prepare his order of his house. And as the master servant of God's house, what he will do, he will give a summary. The book of Deuteronomy is Moses' farewell speech to the people of Israel. His service is at an end, and he will give them his parting words. And in the entire book, what he will do, he will sum up and give them a summary of the great privileges, the advantages, immunities, the blessings, the gifts which God has given them. And among all these privileges and advantages, two of them are particularly important. He will lay out for them their peculiar privilege that unlike the surrounding nations who make gods of gold and silver and wood, they worship the work of their hands. They worship a living God the God who liberated them, provided for them, protected them, defended them, the God who blessed them with gifts and graces. In contrast to the surrounding nations, they do not work of idols and the work of their hands. They worship 
a living and true God. A God who protects, a God who defends, a God who provides, a God who does great things. It will remind them that among the nations, there are no people more wiser than they are, or ought to be wiser, and he'll give them the reason. Because God has given them a set of laws, a set of laws that can withstand the scrutiny of reason, goodness, justice, righteousness. He gave them good, holy laws, summarizing the Ten Commandments, and challenged them. Find any nation among the world that have laws as just, righteous, good, reasonable, intelligent, wise, as these laws. They're therefore privileged people. And the words which Moses uttered to the people of Israel is more applicable to us than to them. And why? The words in today's readings. Where God will not leave the people of Israel orphaned, but he's going to raise up one like Moses to lead them to be their leader and the commander, to guide them, to teach them, to redeem, to save, to comfort all that God does. And so we hear the words today that God will raise up one like Moses. These words, these words of hope, these words of God's promise, serve as the hope that sustains the people of Israel through their turbulent history. It comforted them, comforted them in persecution, in death, in famine, in calamity. It sustained them throughout the entire history. These words were uttered today were the very words that guided the Magi all the way from the east to Bethlehem that God who made this promise fulfilled it. And hence, we have the season of Christmas. It is these words that will inspire the gospel. John will speak of the word of God becoming flesh. This is the man in whom God has placed his word. He embodied it, and it has become flesh and make his dwelling among us. From these words, God will bring forth our holy religion. Christianity, he will give birth to Christianity. And by it, will transform the world. Through our Christian and Catholic religion, the world will have hospitals. The world will have institutions, great institutions of governance. They'll have universities. And through this, God transformed and liberated humanity and transformed them. And no people have a more blessing and more privilege as we are. Because Moses will remind the people that no people on the face of the earth has God as close to them as they were. And what was true yesterday is true to us as Catholics today, that no people have got to it as close as we do. No people ought to be wiser, more prudent, more reasonable than we are. And why? Because as Jesus will remind his apostles, we will hear what the people of Israel never heard. Those to whom Moses gave these words, it was only hope, but we've heard what they haven't heard. We have seen what they have not seen. And in much the same way Christ would say to his apostles, blessed are your ears, because you've heard what many wish to hear. You've been given eyes to see what many wish to see. 
and therefore his words, Moses' words, are pertinent and applicable to us today much more than it was in ancient days. We are a blessed and privileged people and we must be reasonable. We're called to be reasonable. And in laying out before us in our second reading today, what St. Paul reminds us is we're covenant people. We are a covenant people. We are in a covenant with God. And the sacrament of marriage is the means by which you and I learn to know what that covenant is. In the mind of the world, a covenant for them is an exchange of goods and services. We treat each other as goods and services. When you're no longer usable to me, you're exposable, you're disposable, expendable. But in the covenant which God formed, we're not exchanging goods and services. People are not goods and services. Disposable, expendable. Because in the covenant, what we'll have is an exchange of life and love. Quite a different ballgame. And we as Catholics must be reasonable. We will and must be distinguishable. We are a distinguishable people. And we must be distinguishable. And the three major things that will distinguish us as a people. Our faith. Our hope. And our love. Our three distinguishing characters. We're people of faith, we're people of hope, and we're people of love. And what today's readings lays out, why we are a people of hope. Because with God, a promise made was a promise kept. He kept it, and he will keep it. It's the nature and beauty of the man. And therefore, in our world, and we as Catholics have to deal with the world. We understand that. But there must be a difference. As a people of peace, a people of wise and great wisdom, we must accommodate the world. But we cannot conform. We'll accommodate. Where accommodation is possible, we accommodate, but we cannot conform. Our faith dictates we cannot conform. Today's readings lay out we cannot conform because the ways of God and the ways of men are quite different. His thoughts and their thoughts are different. And if we profess religion, and profess to the people of God, then we can accommodate them, but we cannot conform. Their ways and our ways are not the same. The way we proceed, the principles from which we move, the motive that drives us, our desires are quite different. And as St. Paul will lay out today, our desire must always be to do what is pleasing and acceptable to God. It is not what is pleasing and acceptable to men because we cannot serve two masters. There is this great battle for the Catholic mind, both from within and from without. Two rival claimants laying claim to our minds and to our hearts and we cannot serve both. It is impossible. We cannot do both. And therefore we must choose who we will serve, to whom do we give our minds, to whom we give our hearts. And as Christians, we bear that name. We cannot serve two masters. I know the world in which we live 
We believe we can have our cake and eat it too. But experience will always tell us life is always a trade-off. There is no free lunch. Everything comes with a cost. The question is, what price are you willing to pay? There is nothing that is free. It comes at a cost. And we must decide what price we're willing to pay. But we cannot serve two masters. We must be distinguishable in our ways, in our conduct, in our speech, in our life. We must be distinguishable. And faith, hope, and love are our three great characters. And we cannot lose them. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? and lose his own soul. And God gave his answer. It will profit nothing. Nothing at all. We accommodate the world, but we do not conform. Conformity belongs to the ignorant. We're not an ignorant people. We're wise, just, prudent, reasonable, intelligent people and we must act accordingly the God whom we serve is a wise and prudent God and so much his people we're not fools we're not ignorant we're people of faith Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called by Jesus to holy lives, let us now offer our prayers and petitions for all those in need. For the Cardinal's annual stewardship appeal, may God's grace and blessing shower down upon our parish for our support of those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, that they learn to overcome problems together and that they, this be a time of blessing when they grow in friendship, understanding, love, and prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the people of the United States, that we may be united in building a society in which everyone can have the opportunity, opportunity to live with dignity and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us remember in a special way at this Mass the people of our parish. We pray to the Lord for those, for those souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, especially Dorothy Bora, Margaret Mary Crow, May they receive the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, blessed are you, for in your Son you have shown us the way to be your true disciples. Hear these our prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <coughs> O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the cup and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church pray throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Margaret, our patron saint, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord, nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Today began, begins Catholic School Week. Please keep our students, teachers, principals, and their families in your prayers as we thank God for, we thank God for them and for our Catholic schools. Eucharistic ministry. God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God. Amen.